and good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us here for the very first session of Castle Zintelin. If you are been with us for the long haul or um, you've been following this as a podcast on YouTube, you know that this campaign has been a bit of a wild ride already. But uh, now we're going to transition into Castle Zintelin, which is probably going to dial up the absurdity that uh, we've become familiar with. So if you're not familiar with what Castle Zintelin is or what it is, uh, is trying to live up to. Uh, this is an adventure module that was created to be an homage uh, to surreal funhouse mega dungeons like Teagle Manor or Castle Amber, those types of um, sort of surreal, absurdist uh, adventure modules. So we're going to be using this to supplement our Dolmenwood campaign, and it's going to be our analog for the Cold Prince's Keep. And so this is a brand new chapter for us, and we're clearing the way for some fresh blood to, to join us. So uh, we are inviting our audience to join us to play. You can sign up to play in future Castle Zintelin games by joining our Discord server. Um, if I got somebody who might, wouldn't mind throwing that in the chat. Um, Otherwise, if you just need the link, it's discord.gg slash 20 sides to every story. That'll bring you into the place where we're always hanging out, talking about the games that we play. And we do post opportunities for people to join us in games. And so uh, if you do decide to take us up on that invite, um, you'll basically take on the role of a level one hireling. Uh, that is going to join the group in clearing the cobwebs and threats found within the castle and seek out its treasures. So if you're interested, just hop on over to the Discord server and you'll be able to get the details and all that and get signed up to play. Uh, the sequence of that is going to be first Saturday of each month at 8 p.m. Uh, is when those games will run. So it'll be a little bit predictable um, as you're trying to figure out your schedule and whether it'll fit or not. If you enjoy listening to this session and you're hungry for more, um, you're wondering how did we get to this point, we have all of our past episodes up on YouTube, or uh, if you prefer to listen to the sessions in a condensed audio format, we have those available as a podcast as well. All of that's up on our Patreon page, which you can check out at patreon.com slash 20 sides to every story. But enough of all that. Uh, we are going to get started here. Uh, Castle Zintelin awaits. I'm Alex. I'll be the GM for this session. And as always, I am joined here by Winston playing Silver upon his brow. Dawson playing Topsy, the Grimmelkin. Isaac playing Friar Fitzpatrick. Maureen playing Lilibeth the Hunter. Ryan playing Sir Joffrey the Knight. And Chris playing Thomas the Minstrel. So where we are beginning, our adventurers have been our adventurers have been traveling north through the dense Dolman Wood, trying to get to a location that had been scryed previously by using one of the Dolman stones, and they uh, uh, identified the location of Horblight Keep on the northern banks of Lake Longmere. Um, it has been a long road, uh, clearing uh, the path forward, kind of hacking their way through the forest. They've had some encounters up until this point. But um, they can feel, now that they've found the, the banks of the lake, that it is only a matter of time um, that before they will be able to stumble upon the, uh, the destination. As you are all traveling... Um, it is another brisk autumn day, um, slightly overcast, and you have been traveling on foot uh, for probably about four hours on this on this autumn day, and you've been following the 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 lake, which uh, does very little to warm your bones or comfort you. It's just kind of damp air. Um, can't wait to get at least the fire going so you can absorb some of that comfort and warmth. 
Um, but you're still traveling through the woods. And after about, yet, like I said, four hours or so, the woods kind of break and they give way to more of a marshy, flat, windswept terrain in front of you. Um, it looks like on the opposite side of this, this, this patch of marsh, uh, the woods continue. Um, but there's sort of a harrowing wind whistling through this area, um, created, created by the winds hitting this terrain. Um, it's intense. Like it's very, very loud, um, almost deafening. And you look out, uh, from the tree line and you can see in the center of this marsh, it's eh, maybe about a hundred yards wide. Um, you can see in the, the center of this patch, there's a sphere of granite, almost like a monument that rises up out of the wetlands. Um, it's on a pedestal and it rises up and it, it becomes like a spherical at the top. And, you know, it's hard to scrutinize from your vantage point so far away, but it looks like there it's possible there's some writing and such like etched into it. And as you look out, you also see that there is somebody else um, that is present. And currently, their attention is on that granite monument, uh, almost as if they're inspecting it. Um, the individual appear to be a human, uh, rather short of stature. Um, he's wearing a rather fine traveling coat cloak he's got a backpack kind of you know strapped to his uh one shoulder it's kind of slung over his shoulder he's wearing very fine suit of leather armor um doesn't seem to be aware of you um as you're like kind of approaching and spying at him um you do get the sense that he like can just feel that there's like eyes on him like he kind of like looks around a little bit but he doesn't his his gaze never like locks on to where your location is. Like he he's just sensing his spider senses going off, but um he continues continues to examine the monument. He's how far ahead? About a hundred yards or Yeah. Yeah. So he's in kind of like that windy marshy area? Yep. Does it appear like he's getting like hammered with wind? Does it appear like it's a like does he is he covering his mouth? Is it like a whole thing? Yeah, the wind as it hits the marsh, like it's whipping up his like cloak and his hair is kind of, you know, going with the wind every which way. Um it almost feels like there's some kind of like um maybe the wind off of the lake kind of gets caught in this little pocket and is like circulating in that in that way that it's causing this whistling. Could be why it... he doesn't see us too. He's a little distracted. Now, is it is it like grass and stuff up to this pedestal? Or is this more like that pedestal is in the middle of a larger, I guess, like flagstoned area or something? It's pretty marshy. So there's like little puddles and such. And there's like, um, there is like, like, tall grass that is like seeping up out of the puddles but you know even looking at the individual you can see that his his boots are probably sunk a few inches into the mud and muck gotcha okay so this is in a kind of a muddy area it's not part of the castle or whatever yeah um, no, no no sign of the castle yet okay well i i mean i'd say keep our eyes peeled anybody uh, ranged weapons ready seems odd that somebody is out here by themselves that either is a testament to his uh, lack of intelligence or the strength of his sword arm so you know i'd be i would be really confused if he was absolutely like struck a post he could be one of those heroes from ancient stories all he needs to do is strike that like mighty pose with how much the wind's blowing up you know you ever read like when the wind blows through your hair and the cape furls in the wind it's like that but he's not trying and it really appears as if she is heading to the 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 granite structure in the center. Yeah, he's just his, he's his standing there. On it. 
He's standing. He's not moving towards it. Yeah, you're looking at him, and he's um, he's like squinting and looking at it. At some point, like he pulls out um, it looks like a gold pocket watch, and he's like looking at that. He's looking up at the sky, like there's no sense of urgency behind anything that this man is doing. Um, well, uh, I should say, and. In light of uh, Thomas's response to Thomas's comment, I went out searching for this castle on my own as well. So, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily, um, what is it you said, sort of intelligence? <laughs> yes. Um, but I guess I do have a, a decent sword arm at times um, when I can hit. Uh, but my point being is this could be an adventurer like myself, someone searching for artifacts or tools or devices or... In this case, uh, maybe just studying the architecture. I say, I say we approach. Carefully, though. Um, Topsy, do you want to scout this as any one of your particular phases of being? Nah, I'm good with it just right now. But definitely, okay, cool. like as you, if you say that phases of being, I'll be being myself on top of Silver's armor because I'm not going to go in that mush. That's just nasty. And I'll hop up on Silver's shoulders and just sit there. Okay, so you're like transformed as a little form? kitty cat? Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just hanging <laughs> off of him? Like piggyback. Piggyback. You know, like you put like your kid on your shoulders. I'm doing that, but to Silver. Remind me person. again how tall is Topsy? I got only three feet. <laughs> how much does Topsy weigh? Uh, I got full armor on. Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He is, oh no, he delivered all our money to the bank. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. It, 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 50. So I'm a, I'm a, I don't know, uh, my armor weighs 400 something. Would you, ra- oh would you rather me be kitty cat or? Yeah, yeah. What, uh, so you hop on and you're like full grim looking mode. I'll just kind of grab your paws or your arms or whatever they are. <laughs> be like, Topsy, I, I, I appreciate the, um, the attention, but uh, maybe you could lighten yourself up a bit. Oh, fine. And like he'll like swing her, she'll swing herself like, off his armor. And then as he goes past where he's look, where everyone's looking at him from the side, and they turn for to a little kitty cat and <laughs> turn it back up. All right. Gotcha. You're on my shoulder. All right. I'm going to march forward. All right. So the follow. group is heading out into the marsh, and um, your boots are making that smacking sound as they're. Uh, pulling their way up off the earth, uh, definitely like makes a bit of noise that uh, your presence is felt. And the man turns around. Um, he has a little bit of a surprised look on his face, but um, he, he kind of gives a, a wave. Uh, you could see that as he turns around, you know, the he's got weapons. He's got a short sword and a dagger, clearly uh, sheathed on his belt, uh, but he doesn't go for them. Uh, he just looks around and... Gives a wave and he says, uh, "Hello." I see that I am not alone in observing the beauty of this location. This uh, marker here is um, interesting to me. I do not remember it being here. Oh, you, uh, I, I know. Um, uh, our friend, it's okay if we approach further. Yes, uh, please. No problem. Come forward. You say you've been here before? Uh, yes, I have many times. I am trying to find my way home. But, uh, Uh are you from this area? Uh, no. Uh, not really. We are uh, in search of a a structure uh, around these parts. Hmm. Yeah. But where, where is your home, friend? Uh, I'm looking for the castle Zintelin. Oh. Oh. Oh, you live there? Yes. My family rules these lands, friend. Oh. He's going to look back at the others. I thought it. I assumed it was de- deserted. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to move up to him and I'm going to poke him. Uh, what a manner is this? <laughs> Why are you poking I'm me? I'm sorry. I love these. Clothes. I <laughs> fine travelers' clothes you have, friend. Where did you get these? D- 
Did I not just tell you that I am royalty? Why are you poking me? This is uh, the way of me and my brother. Uh, I'll, I'll poke him. Well, this I'll is poke. how we are. You may, if you, you wish. You may. I will is not. This, is this, is this, this is a unbecoming. tradition in our family. Oh. Well. Each uh, their own. If you were not of the cloth, my uh, friend, I uh, would have thought to slap you. <laughs> well, but I do not react. want to besmirch wise. my stature in the eyes of the one true God. Yes, yeah, well, yes. He thanks you and, and so do I. Um, perhaps instead of poking one another, we would introduce ourselves, give our name. I will start. My name is Gilbert. Gilbert Malivol. Oh, hello, Gilbert. I am a prior. Uh, Stephen Fitzpatrick. This is my brother. Brother. And then I boop him on the nose. Boop. <laughs> and I'll boop you back. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I am, um... Joffrey, <laughs> Joffrey Fitzpatrick, uh, a knight of Lord Ramius. Lord Ramius. Thomas Mornspire. Lord Ramius. Who is this Lord Ramius you speak of? Well, yeah, I, I, that's what I was going to say. I'd assume that, that these lands were part of his. Um... No, no. No. And, and, and what house do you say that you are part of? I am from House Malevo. These lands are ours. Uh, we have been given them by the King of Brackenwald. My great grandfather was very important. Is he still alive? A uh, yes. And he resides in the castle. He does. Mm -hmm. Can you mention silver? There is no Malivol house. What's that? There's no Malivol house. There is no house. Is that Only true? Nothing. Is, that one, of the, is that one of the known houses? It is, it is not a house that you've ever heard of. I'll just say, I'm not from here, so I'll take your word for it. I guess the only uh, asterisk I will put on that is Thomas. Do you have an ability that allows you to potentially recall lore or history when is it only when you encounter an object? I am unsure. Let's, Let's look see. that up because it's possible that Thomas might be able to tell you something. Uh, yeah, my lore is uh, to identify monsters, including their basic powers and vulnerabilities and magic items including their basic powers okay so you have not heard of this house he the individual that you were speaking with um will suggest to you that well okay another thing just to point out something that's weird is he referred to the king of brackenwald <laughs> right yeah i thought that was odd but again Truly, as an outsider, I wouldn't probably have that settledy down. Um, Topsy, have you? How long? Have, how long has Topsy been in the world? In Dolmenwood? Meow. <laughs> you'll you'll hit. You hear I'm seven. Pat, you that? <laughs> you'll hear seven pats in your helmet. Seven hundred years, amazing. A little half pat. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I guess I'm kind of saying is like, I think this is maybe on the uh, people who are more familiar with Dolma Wood to be like, okay, that's, that's odd. Yeah. I feel well, almost like this Perth. You know, we, we have experienced some time loss and traveling to ferry and coming back and time being gone. I wonder if this person maybe has experienced something similar and is trying to come home to a home that is hundreds or thousands of years gone now. Yes, our friend, where have you been since you have not been home? Well, I have been spent much time among the goblins. Oh. Yes. It's our choice for royalty. Well, even there, I have ascended to a position of great power. I spent a lot of time at the Goblin King's 
home in Castle Muddlemeat. Uh, until recently, we had a bit of a disagreement. What, what, kind, of, what kind of disagreement? Uh, if you don't mind. My amorous nature drove me to one whom he had eyes on. Yes. A, a, gob a goblin lady. Hmm? Uh, no, no, no. I don't. I don't go for goblins. <laughs> no. Human woman. So what did she have to say about it? Uh, well, there was no time to find out. I think we were hitting it off quite well. She was, uh, she was fatu infatuated with me, and I wrote her many love songs and poetry, and, uh, yes, the, the Goblin King did not, uh, approve of this. I had to leave. And so I have um, made myself quite wealthy, uh, working with the goblins, helping. Yeah, I'm a bit of an adventurer myself. I was quite good at finding antiques and uh, items of intrigue that they would sell in their markets. Yeah, it is time to go home. Now, you say you said it was Castle Centillon. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And just to be very clear, Alex, as we are kind of patching in, we still think it's Horblight, right? Yes. We know it by a different name. Okay. So we happen to be also looking for a castle, but it goes by a different name. Uh, have you ever heard of Horblight? Uh, n nobody calls it this anymore. No. Ever since oh. the King of Brackenwald gave my great grandfather this land, it has a new name, Sintilin. What well, year? friend. What year was it that the king bequeathed this castle to you? Oh, I suppose it was some 850... Uh, sorry. I suppose that that was some 250 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> some 250 years ago. What? Uh, I believe so. Uh, so, so. So what What year was that? Uh, 250 well, years ago. Chris, Chris has drawn a blank, but I'll reduce 250 years so i will say yeah so he, it's in such and such you start asking him like these questions and it becomes very clear to you that he either he's mistaken or he's a time traveler or something because he believes it's currently um he believes it's currently like a little bit north of like 650 years ago is what the time period that he thinks he's from and he would tell you that, like, the history of the castle, he'd say um, that that was granted to, as a gift to his uh, great-grandfather, some, uh, you'd time stamp it at about 100, 850 years ago. Okay. Got it. A little bit before Topsy was with us. A little <laughs> older than Topsy. Yeah. Well, I will kind of, you know, I mean, I look at everybody. We have, we, tell him? Him. we have to tell him. We have to. Yeah, I guess you're right. We we should preface it with the fast fact that we lost some time as well, you know. So so we are sympathetic and and we have experienced this, and we think you may be experiencing this. So you share uh, that idea or concern with him, and he's like, "Oh, well, it is true. I spent a great deal of time there with the goblins." I see. A great lapse, then. And I'll even let him know that, you know, you know, we've never heard of his house. Yeah. You've never heard? Yeah. My, my house is a very powerful house. It is... It is currently defunct. That cannot be. This is... Well, then, we... We must go. Uh, uh, seems like we are heading in the same direction, friends. We go together. If what you say is true, well, hopefully it is not. My family, this must be a big misunderstanding. My family will give you a warm welcome. Mm. Well, I was going to suggest that we go together anyways. So I'm on board with this. It seems that we have a shared purpose of discovery. And maybe you could help us chart the land. But before we go, I would like to uh, look at the sphere and the writing on it. Yeah. See if it's a language that I know, or if not, I'll attempt to decipher it. And God forbid 
you know, something has fallen upon your castle, maybe this is related to it, and we might have some hints as to what has befallen your your family and and the keep. So, Thomas, you take a look at the stone mm -hmm. and the writing. You can definitely read it. Um, is it old Voldish? Or... It, yeah, it would be old Voldish. And it reads, uh, This stone stands by decree of the Triple Compact of Tolmanwood. King Hadrig of Brackenwold the High Abbot of Wells Keep, the Elder Vanatark of the Wood, hereby knows fire dominion over frost, the gates of Phrygia be shut, the Lord of Winter may pass no more. I will read that Ooh. as Ooh. out loud as I'm... And the Cold Prince was thousands of years ago, right? So, the... Yes... The Triple Compact would have been about 850 years ago. Yeah. And are we to sort of believe that this is like a monument uh, uh, to that, or that this is actually like the door that they sealed? It could be both. So you know that the Ring of Chell is made up of uh, various stones that the church, the kingdom of Brackenwald and the Druun came together to, um, conspire together to like place this ward in this area. Um, could be that this is one of those stones given the nature uh, of like, the inscription. Could I, uh, just to make it easier, I think I might ask, uh, our companion to and reference that and says it looks like we're getting closer uh i think so uh, i just stopped to look at this stone because i i'd never seen it before hmm. i'm gonna move a little closer to the stone with topsy on my shoulder do either of us have any ill reaction um more than normal. Not, not really more than normal. Like you, you do, but not uh, as a, not in relation to this particular monument. Yeah, like we're already kind of under that, that sort of queasy sort of feeling of repulsion. Yeah, but not. This is not like it's not like radiating from this. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna ask our friend, uh, and what was his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Gilbert. Gilbert. Um. I'm going to ask him if, if he's familiar with the Cold Prince and if, if, um, if you know, when, when he left, that it was something that the lands were dealing with or, or if he's familiar with the legend. And, and if he's not, maybe explain it to him what this is. You don't have to worry about the Cold Prince. He is gone. Uh, my family helped with dealing with this problem. And uh, the castle is now ours. Gilbert, um, what do you make of this uh, this monument? Do you think that there's any sort of warding that's hiding your home, possibly? Or making it difficult for us to locate it? Because you said you're having trouble finding, right? Well, I think it has been some time, apparently, up according to you, 650 years since I've been home. So, yes, maybe mm -hmm. things have shifted around a bit, but I believe it is up this way. Just north, along the, the okay. banks of the lake. Uh, this stone. Uh, just a cute monument, I think. All right. Well, I'm satisfied. <clears throat> How about you, Topsy? I was going to scratch you in the, the head a little. Yo. <laughs> All right. Topsy's been alive for 700 years, believe it or not. He's <laughs> kind of scratching the cat. Let us... Let us move forward and try and get some shelter from this wind. Yes. So you keep traveling uh, the remainder of the day. Uh, you know, you, you progress out of the marsh and back into the woods. Uh, and at the point when your bodies can take you no further and you are feeling exhausted, you hunker down and make camp 
for the night. Um, you are sitting around the fire this evening. Um, I don't know. Friar, what, what's for dinner tonight? What, what would you have collected or, uh, gotten together to make for the group? Um, I think we took care of the forge roll last session, so I don't think we have any, uh, of that. So it would be, uh, we'd be using some iron rations tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. Try to make a stew out of some of that jerky. <laughs> so it sounds like it's kind of roughing it a little bit, just eating uh -huh. some of it. It's not a fresh meal or anything like yeah. that. Gilbert's kind of complaining a little bit, like, like <laughs> not complaining, but he's, you know, insinuating like this food isn't uh, of the quality that he is right. used to or whatever. And he says, well, oh. when we get to the castle, uh, we will be treated at the, the cooks at Castle Sintillin are the best. Mm. Yes, so, I, I look forward to that. <laughs> it's it's too late. It's too late tonight to to do anything. But um, maybe tomorrow, or maybe after we get closer to the camp, the day after the the castle, the day after, I'm willing to go out and participate in any hunt that might be in progress, or start my own if we need to. Ah. Uh go out and hunt i i would join you if you uh would like some company certainly uh, i am sorry your beauty is captivating how do you get anything done being with these this uh, this lot they they must they lavish praises and speak of your beauty non-stop to you no um, I am touching my mask and feeling my hair and saying, um, that's generally not a problem with this group. We are friends and companions, and I consider them to be my brothers in arms. Keep it in your pants, Gilbert. Uh, sorry, I, <laughs> I speak out of line. No offense meant. I don't wish to get into another Goblin King situation so soon. <laughs> I don't think you need to be worried about that. I tend to be very direct in how I address my affections. So uh, you're speaking of uh, potentially, you, you want to, when you start speaking of going out on a hunt and such, um, he would probably say, well, maybe it's best that we land at the castle before heading out into the woods for such things. I think we are nearly, we are nearly home. I, I recognize this part of the forest. I think that is a good idea. Let's say you, others in arms, except for Topsy, sister. Yo. Yeah. Yes, I'd love to see the, the castle. I'd love to see the castle and all the chefs and all this wonderful food we will be eating. Yes. yes. I can't wait to see your face when you are able to give us all this wonderful food. Well, the sooner that we get some shut eye and get up in the morning, the sooner we will be there in such comforts. Yes, comfort. Is there anything that anybody wishes to do this evening before we progress to the next day? I'm just gonna have a talk with my brother about Sath. Yeah, I'll just I'll play some music and you know, <laughs> kind of. I don't want to say liven up the evening a little bit, but at least have a little bit of comfort in that fashion any local rodents scurrying about uh sure yeah you can find something uh some say, sort of uh foresty squirrel or something you know chipmunk chipmunk alvin <laughs> alvin or alvin i thought i said alvin and then i heard it yeah well. i call him alvin <laughs> <laughs> you do that so delicately I, I always appreciate that so there's a bit of a chat happening between the brothers oh. I'm, just, I'm just saying you know he could have known that I, I knew you were being sarcastic he could have known that you were being sarcastic yes that's what I think I w it wasn't a secret I thought that the food was pretty good I, it was I mean good. it's what I had He's a rich man. He's always gonna. You know how it is, brother. Yes, it reminds me of our uncle. Ah, uh, yes. Remember when I gave him a bit 
of my mushrooms and he shat himself for weeks. <laughs> uh, oh no, brother, you did not. You did, did. not. I you did, did not. Yes, he was. He was, he was thrown out of our manor. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't do that to Gilbert, did you? I did, Uncle Gilbert. <laughs> he was a tad, a, a weasel tad for sure. I'm happy that's it. He got everything coming to him. <laughs> All right. I'm good. The more and more I learn about you, Fry, you are definitely a, not a very nice man. So, uh, that's a bit strong. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, moving ahead here, there's little conversations happening and such. You get a good night's rest. Um, and the next morning, you uh, pack up everything and uh, are, are prepared to continue heading north along the shores of Lake Longmere. A half day's travel further. And finally, you get the sense that you have arrived at your destination. Because ahead of you, rising up over the tops of the trees, you see an outcropping of stone where a fearsome castle has its silhouette contrasted against the waters of Long Lake Longmere below. Um, you can see that there is a stair that is carved into the cliffside that winds its way up from the banks of the lake to the outer walls of the keep on top of this outcropping. Um, just as you saw in the divination of this location, there is also a uh, aisle that bisects the lake here. Um, it seems like it bisects the lake and is sort of the entrance point for a river that uh, comes down south and feeds into the lake. Um, upon that aisle, there is, it, it kind of rises up and it also has like a cliffside, um, a sheer cliffside on the southwestern side. And so uh, kind of the outcropping of rock and the aisle kind of create this almost like canyon like in the uh, waterway um it, it would be plausible that someone could like build like a bridge that would span that width but there is no there's no bridge or walkway or anything that does so um on the aisle at the top there's looks like there's a ruined like watchtower uh that maybe like surveyed like boats and such coming and going from the lake to the river um it looks like it is in Disrepair, it would not, there, there is no easy way to get out to that aisle and get up to where that tower is. But um, it may not be the most prominent thing in your attention. Really what you were looking at is that, that, that castle. And Gilbert, um, his eyes light up as soon as it comes into your view and he says, Ah, we have made it, friends. Welcome to Castle Zindelin. Just up and them stairs, we will... We will be welcomed. We will be greeted by my family. And he sees this um, kind of ruined watchtower? Because you said it, it's, it's like it's in shambles or it's still standing or... The watchtower that's out, out in the lake on the, on the aisle? That, right. That, that's in disrepair, yeah. The castle... As you're kind of scrutinizing the castle that's high up... It also, like, it's still, it's still standing and it looks, like, relatively intact, but there's, like, little blemishes that you can see. Places where maybe, like, a couple of bricks and such have fallen away. Uh, Gilbert does not seem to, either he's in denial or he's just not really scrutinizing it the way you are. I mean, that's, you know, that could happen over time. I guess, oh, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll we'll just follow him on the path. Yeah. You know where you're going, I take it, so lead the way, Lord Gilbert. Oh, man, we are snarky. <laughs> I was going to ask, Thomas, is that exactly how you deliver that? I just wanted to yes. know. <laughs> the dripping, the yes. dripping disdain. Indeed. 
So he uh, he he eagerly marches forward and he takes to the stair, and um, it's probably a good fifteen minutes of hike up, up those the stairs, stairs uh, to get. Hey. Yeah, and they're they the stairs are not are also not in great shape either. So it's a little bit you're you're not just like walking up these stairs like you're you're taking your time. To make sure that the you know one one fell step and like you'd be plummeting you know uh, to your death. So uh, there's no guardrail or anything. But you make it your way up, and um, I'm putting you here on a battle map now, so you can kind of see what you are gazing at as you make it to the top. There is a ruined gatehouse that is immediately in front of you as you make it to the top of the cliffside. Um. And you can see that the rocks or the boulders and everything, the stonework that is caved in, like, like the entire gatehouse is crumbled, and like all of these stones are heavily moss covered. Like this is not a recent phenomenon that this took place. Um, there's like a the towers, more or less, that would have flanked like the gatehouse and the portcullis. Those are still relatively intact, but they're kind of. Um, have fallen in and given way, but you can still see like the their form is still relatively there. There's a flock of ravens that is perched on either side, just hanging out. Um, don't seem too concerned as you make your way up, although they they all kind of turn. You can tell that they are like looking in your direction, um, maybe in anticipation of you closing uh, the proximity. Um, you can see that you're currently, like, the stairway, like, comes up and connects up with, like, an old, old, old um, kind of gravel path that seems like it leads up to a stone, um, or a, not a stone, well, yeah, like, like it leads up to, like, the, the inner courtyard of the keep beyond the port class. but it also sw uh, splits and heads southward. It seems like it heads southward along the, the southern walls of the courtyard. All of the grass up here is, you know, it's autumn, so it's all pretty brown and dead kind of feeling. Um, lots of weeds sprouting up all over the place. Um, and beyond... You can't really see into the courtyard very well with all the rubble there, but you can see the castle rising up overhead. Many, many towers kind of spiking up off of it, and, like, it's, you know, it's impressive. It's it's a this tall, elegant building, but in other areas, you can see the little time has taken its toll on this building. And it's pretty clear from the rubble and the... the um state of the grounds and whatnot that this is like gone wild that it's unkept very right. much so yeah does and gilbert pick up yeah i'm gonna kind of see his cues and if not just kind of maybe um steer him towards that revelation yeah he's he's looking at the gatehouse and he says what has happened here this is time i believe 650 years of time has happened here lord gilbert um, where, when can we expect, uh, the feast, friend? He's, like, he's, like, not available. Like, he moves forward, mm -hmm. and he's, like, <laughs> touching all the stones of, like, the gatehouse, like, like, trembling. Like, you know, his mind is blown. Yeah, Joffrey will approach him and put his arm on his back and, you know, just be like, look, you know, I, I... I can only sympathize, you know, we, we experienced something similar, but it was a much shorter amount of time and we lost friends and we lost, you know, a lot during that time. And I can only imagine, you know, what you're feeling and I'm sorry. Yes, I, I'm sorry as well. Right. But Lord Gilbert, I, I will say that, um, you know, we have interest in this castle to explore it. You're welcome to come with us, and maybe you can uncover your family history, what happened. I, 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 I must, I must survey the grounds. Pardon me. And he starts to like move like to the south, like he he's following like that, 
that road, and he's going to like the south side. I should follow him, guys. I think it's not the least he knows the the area, and you know we could at least get the lay of the land a bit, and just make sure he doesn't do anything stupid or hurt himself or anything. Yes, yeah, that sounds yeah. good. He would serve as a good guide for us while mm -hmm. here. If we can get him on board, he may not be, oh. you know, he may not be into us looting his family's treasures. Yeah. So um, we're going to get to the point now where I'm going to move us into procedural things. So it'll be okay. like a turn, a turn has taken is taken up with just the getting up here, talking to Gilbert, and then moving to, like, the south side. Uh, go ahead, uh, Marina. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no. I I, I just didn't, wanted to know. I would... I'm going to um, move up a little bit and want to, like, try and not divert him so much, but so just ask him a little bit more about... So do you recognize what you're seeing as we walk? It is... In disrepair, the servants, they they have not been keeping up. Like, he's, like, he's kind of, like, going in and out of, like, he he's like, he, he clearly, like, is acknowledging that what happened, but he's, like, falling back into, like, talking about servants, like, as if this place is inhabited. And so he's, like, he's blaming the, you know, the, the workers. It's their fault that this is, this place is in, in the state that it's in. Well, I'm certain that something must have prevented them from being able to continue to provide the service that you expect. Um, so I know this is going to be very difficult. It was very difficult for us as well. But the more that you can help us to understand what you're seeing, the more we can help you. So to us, this looks like a very large castle with a great, or a very powerful family. Yes. As you come down around and you're talking with him, he's he's like clearly like like just forging ahead on this this path, which um, mm -hmm. as it turns this corner um, at the southern wing of the the castle structure, um, you can see that there are two great double doors of mahogany. On either side, they are flanked by uh, statues. Um, both of these statues look like um, like fantastical beasts. Um, one, like both of them look like like chimeras or chimeras. What is that? A head of a dragon, a lion, and a goat. I want to say. Um, and so he's the other. He's looking at the doors. Um, he says, oh, well, at least this side, it looks like um, it's still in a good state. Yes? Oh, good, good. Um, I assume that these um, chimeras are part of your family's crest? Well, no. Oh. Uh, they, they've always been here, these statues. So you came to the castle at, with your family... Or your your great grandfather built these here, or he just found them and put them there. Perhaps they belong to the the elf one, the prince, oh. the ice Cold prince, prince, whatever he is called. Cold. Cold, Cold prince. Um, yeah, sure. Cold prince. Um, that's that's definitely possible. Um, from what I remember of the ice prince. Being careful here because I'm not exactly sure that he's noticed Silver's elfishness at this point. Although I don't see how he could miss it. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty blue. <laughs> he's pretty blue. He's pretty drunk sounding. <laughs> I would think that if I met him, I would assume he was like an ogre or like a <laughs> an oni. Yeah. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> so the other thing probably to note here is like at the backside, like the castle. Um, like the, the, there isn't much of a slope to the drop off. Like, um, you could see out to the lake and across the way to that aisle. Okay. I am, am going to, again, put my hand on Gilbert and I'm going to say, before you open this door, you need to prepare yourself for the reality that may be behind it. Your family may not be here. 
there may be other things that have taken this castle. Um, I just want you, before that door opens, to prepare yourself for what may be on the other side. I am ready. And uh, I guess I, just because I haven't mentioned it yet, the group does have a hireling with them. Kezi is like kind of hanging out at the back. She's got her longbow out. Um, and she's maybe like looking out at the lake. And she just says, she like mutters something under her breath. Like, I'm not, I'm not prepared. Or I'm not ready for the what's on the other side of that door, but go ahead. And I think um, if no one's going to stop him, Gilbert's going to move up to those doors and give them an open. I'm definitely going to have my hand on my sword and um, the other hand tightly gripping my shield. I'll be standing right behind Gilbert in front of my companions. Yeah, same. Ready for combat. I'll stop being a cat now. <laughs> Good idea, Topsy. Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of pet you like, Topsy, you can now. Now's a good time to reveal yourself. And uh, me too. I'm going to actually get out a ranged weapon because Kezi's got her longbow out. As you move forward, um, he opens the door. And as he does so, the, the doors kind of screech open and almost like there's like a moaning sound, like trapped air just kind of whooshes out these doors. Um, and suddenly the statue to the west, all of the heads, all of the chimera heads, or the chimera heads, uh, begin laughing maniacally. Wow. Oh. That's always a good sign. They don't really, like, animate so much. It almost seems like the statues, each of their, like, jaws are kind of hinged and they pop open. But, like, this sound effect emits and and begins to echo and uh, reverberate through the valley. And also some of that, like, carries into into the keep, into the castle. And he, he looks, uh, Gilbert looks startled as that happens. He, that has never happened before. Well, at least everyone knows we're here now. Ah. Uh, Quite a grandiose introduction, I'd say. I'm going to look back over the lake and see if I see anything. Very foggy, misty down below, but you're looking like down. Um, you can definitely hear like the waves of the water kind of like crashing against the rock of the aisle and the cliff that you are standing on. And I guess my concern is just that this was a big loud noise and I just want to see if in the mist or if I see any kind of like motion, especially maybe motion towards our direction. You don't at the moment, although like looking down at the height that you're standing on and looking down and seeing the waves crash, you just feel small in the, the vastness of this is a pretty big lake. Like, it's a pretty... Yeah, and it seems like it's a big castle, too. You know? That's probably just a whole lot of, wow, I'm small. Yes. I'm going to look at my brother and just gonna say, yeah, but just realize how small you are in the universe. Um, yes. Not, not currently. I'm a bit worried about this uh, laughing. Is it still going on? It's it ceases after about uh, thirty seconds or so. Uh, it's like one of those Halloween decorations. It's just yeah. like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. every time you walk past it, the lights have gone well, off now and it's died. I feel. Do so you think this entrance? I am sorry. Go ahead. So, um, I know you're focused on the entrance, but Silver, um, your former patron, um, was this something that he might find amusing? Oh, the prince who was seven, who was seven, I should say. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, he did, depends on his persona. But he had all kinds of strange fascinations uh, and interests. But I guess if you're insinuating that this is something that he may have arranged, I, I wouldn't put it past him, but I think that the timing doesn't make sense because this appears to be maybe newer for poor Gilbert, right? That's true. So, this is post Cold Prince. So, unless it was a trap or something that was put in place 
hundreds of years before it activated. I think this is a, a new development. Just to uh, make sure I communicated this right, he was referring specifically to the laughing as being a, right. a weird thing. Um, he, right. he, he's not surprised by the statues and what they are. And, and I think that's what I'm trying to like parse okay. out. Is like the statues are familiar to him. Is yes. the laughing that's different? So that means in his time period, <laughs> at the very least, this is a new development for him. You know, could be could be um, that the cold prince didn't give up. You know, um, when when you turn over your castle to the next next uh, person taking power, you might set a few booby traps. You know what I mean? Might be uh, you know, hunter seekers. Why, seeker why now? But why now and not 800 years ago? Well, Maybe it's... who knows? Maybe the cold print has returned. Well, well, that seems That's to be impossible. So with the doors open, you can see into the entrance hall here. It is a high vaulted ceiling. Uh, the chamber spans a distance of 40 feet wide, 50 feet long. And the ceilings here are supported by sturdy stone columns that are immaculate in design and construction. Uh, you see that there is um, there's light, not just from the doors that have been opened up, but light that is beaming down from small holes that must be in the decrepit roof. That are just you know there's just like dust motes that are kind of floating on the air. Um, having been kicked up by the, the motion of the doors being opened. Um, the Not Everything is covered in a thin layer of dust, and it, well, it doesn't appear to be touched, no footprints, anything? I mean, it, it's not just dust, though. There's, like, clearly, like, like refuse from some kind of animal. Maybe you know bat guano or something like that. I think you saw bats and things in your divination of this place, um, and so there's that smell. You know, there's just kind of like a layer of waste on everything. Um, you can just barely see patches of where the bare stones of the tiled floor um, are not covered. Um, you see and hear. I guess you hear weeping further on in the chamber. Uh, towards the back, it's a little bit dark, but you can see um, there's a man standing there, back turned to you, um, and he's in the finery of a, a servant or a butler. Um, Well-dressed, nice suit, nice presentation, but he's, uh, he's just sobbing into his hands, his back turned to you. Uh, there are some other things around here. It's not. It's a. It is a furnished entrance hall. There's comfortable seating uh, by the walls, uh, but it all just looks like molding fabric, and you know the couches are kind of one leg maybe broken off, and it's kind of at a at a slant. Um, right as you turn in, as you look to your left, you can see that there is a coat rack there. Uh, old cloak kind of slung over it uh there's a top hat hanging on there um and an uh pair of shoes and a uh cane resting in the corner as if it, it feels like this is like the set for like one guest that has arrived at the castle and kicked off their <laughs> kicked off their traveling shoes and maybe put on some slippers or something and uh progressed in that is what you see. And then there are doors. There are many, many, many doors off of this hall. You can see that there are um, three to the left of the hall. There are two on the right. Um, and given your vantage point, it seems that this entrance hall, uh, there are no doors that close it off on the north end. Like it just like leads into like a kind of like a maybe a gallery hall or something like that that you could just continue progressing further into the castle if you so chose. Does Gilbert seem to recognize the sobbing man? Yeah, he, he looks over there, um, and he seems to recognize him. He says, ah, James, James, what has happened to this place? Why? You get out of the corner and stop weeping and, and do your job, man. And the ghost just continues. He doesn't seem to, like, 
even take notice. Yeah, he just continues weeping. I'll approach the spectral figure. And I'm trying to notice if it is like seems to be ethereal, if I can like see through it a little bit. Uh that those types of things. It def- I'm not really I'm not gonna really talk to it, but just observe. Kind of a- yeah, it's definitely translucent. It's got that sort of ethereal blue uh filter from which you know you could tell like this is not a living breathing person this is definitely an apparition he's even kind of floating uh, a few inches off the ground this is this is your expertise this man appears to be a specter i lose uh, my uh my long sword in my sheath um i might call out uh peace be uh one true god's peace be with you friend uh the gods are not here with us. Oh, <laughs> yes. T- tell us your troubles. Maybe we, you will be able to find peace. Everyone has lost their minds. The castle falls into disrepair. We are all cursed, all who step foot in this place. <laughs> And Gilbert just says, you were talking nonsense. Come on, man, you can pull yourself together. Uh, what, what, what has happened, friend? I am sorry to hear about. Please help us understand so we may help you. The walls, the walls, they bleed. The family has lost their mind. And uh, everything, the castle, it has come alive. And Gilbert, um, Gilbert moves over to where that uh, that walking stick is, and he reaches to go and grab it. And you can see he's like looking at the butler, and he's like, he's raising it over his head, and he's like moving forward to go and like whack him. Oh my god. I'm but, gonna stay his hand. I'm gonna stay his hand. I'm gonna reach my hand up and I'll be like, "He's a specter. We have no time for this. Uh, um, we are better to question him to see what he knows about the fate of your family." And he just like, like you, you grab and you reach up and you hold his hand, and he's like, "Get, get out of my way, uh, you lowly knight!" And like, as you grab his hand, you can feel like the walking stick starts to like move and animate and like wrenches out of his hand that's gonna take a swing to try to crack you over the skull and it rolls a 22 to hit well, I'm... <laughs> oh no here we go no. welcome to five your... points of damage what? oh my lord and then we will Wait. roll initiative so who is your caller going to be? The man who got thumped. The man mm-hmm. who got thumped. So go ahead and give us a D6 roll. Oh, man. I'm going to get, get it. My dice. Hang on a second here. So the so the walking stick kind of came out of his hand and is... Is flying around animated, right now. Flying yep. around right now. Okay. I'm going to go on the assumption that I think it's Gilbert hitting me. <laughs> I rolled a five. All right. So the party goes first. So the situation that we are currently in, the ghost is in, uh, we're going to say, like the northeastern reaches of the room. Um, in the southeastern corner of the room is where uh, Gilbert, Joffrey, and the animated walking stick are. I'm going to presume that the rest of you are basically in the center of of the room, kind of like, you know, you're not really in proximity to either thing that is currently happening. The ghost itself um, has just turned around, and it was it was talking with uh, the friar, so I guess maybe friar, you're maybe in the northwestern corner of the room, but mm-hmm. 
given the commotion that is happening by Gilbert and Joffrey and the cane, that is where the ghost's attention is drawn to that. So are we movement distance away from the cane? Yeah, like like okay. uh, you could just say like where as we move into the first thing we're going to list off is movement. Uh, you could just tell me in proximity to everything that's going on, where would you be standing? Yep. So yeah, we'll start with you, Winston. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my immediate thought is I'm, I've been watching the cane cause it started flying around and that immediately catches my attention. And as soon as I see it, I mean, first of all, I'm already like on guard and kind of maybe taking a couple steps that way, but as soon as it goes violent, that's where I'm moving to that cane. All right, yeah, you can get into melee distance of that. How about Topsy? You see, she was like staring longingly at the top hat, thinking it'd be a funny prank to put on Gilbert. But as soon as like the walking cane starts throwing hands, I guess uh, she'll take a few steps back and be at range. Sounds good. How about Friar? Uh, he's gonna stay at range, uh, kind of glancing at the ghost. Uh, he doesn't want to necessarily do anything with the undead yet, but he is definitely going to go try to get his uh, arranged uh, sling out, see if he can do something with this walking stick. Sounds good. Uh, Lilibeth. Same. I'm going to stay, um, you know, so that I'm at range, and I will try and see if I can do something in the situation, not necessarily the walking stick, because I don't know what's going to happen yet. Sounds good. At range for Lilibeth, Sir Joffrey. Uh, I think that Joffrey's right up in the mix. He kind of thinks that um, that Gilbert is attacking him, and um, I think he's just going to assume that the man is 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 kind of gone a little bit crazy with the situation, and I'm going to try to grapple Gilbert. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Thomas, uh, I am moving to uh, while Sir Joffrey is going to uh, grapple Gilbert. I'm going to move to try and interdict myself in between the walking stick and him to offer defense and I guess attack it, you know, I mean, but move, you know, move in between it and Sir Joffrey to give him protection while attacking it. Sounds good. So I think that's everyone for movement. Uh, let's go for our ranged attacks, starting with Topsy. I got a crossbow. Oh boy, this is a little tricky shot here, but I'm sure I can make it probably. 18 for 5. Uh, 18 against the cane will hit for five points of damage okay uh your uh crossbow bolt hits it's like a perfect strike and it hits um the top of the cane like splinters off the thing is still animated though and now it's got little sharp splintery bits that um oh. are a problem sorry i just think i made it worse uh oh <laughs> Uh, next up, we've got Friar. Was already throwing my stone, probably right at the same time, so I'm going to do that as well. Unfortunately, we'll see how that goes. Uh, 19 for 4 damage. All right. Uh, the stone cracks the cane, um, knocks it back out of the air, and it, like, falls, um, just as it, like as your your stone basically moves it out of the way but it almost feels like or it looks like it like moved out of like an anti-gravity -gra kind of thing and then as soon as it was like out of the field it just like drops like a normal object all right and then um so there's nothing like actively animated or moving other than the ghost is moving towards uh the scene where the squabble is happening uh, probably looks like his ire is drawn towards Gilbert. Um, so I guess, uh, Lilibeth, you were at range. Were you looking to make a ranged attack here? Um, well, I much like the friar, I would have already been primed to hit. Um, but I'm going to say that once I saw two hits, I, I pulled back from that. So I'm not ready to do a ranged attack at this particular point in time, but I can move, uh, to, I think I can move. 
the uh, ward. You, you um, can't move anymore. Really, what I'm asking for here is a ranged more. attack. Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. Um, I'm holding. So then we'll move to melee. Uh, we will start, I think, with Sir Joffrey, who wishes to grapple um, our good Sir Gilbert. I'm just, and I'm just going to shout, like, Listen, man, your son. Sworn an oath to protect the, the royal families of this land. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> All right. I rolled a nat 20. Uh, so he just kind of, like, shoves you off. Um, and you can see that he, he's, he's also looking at the butler, like, um, Oh no, they're going to, they're going at it. Yep. Uh, so that'll bring us to, uh, uh silver. You, you had moved in that area. So I would say like you're in proximity to, uh, Gilbert also, if there's something you wanted to do there. But chop his head off. No, I'm going to pick up the cane and just see like, is it totally inert? You know? Yeah, it seems to be. It seems like the magic, uh, as soon as it was fractured or whatever, the magic in it uh, evaporated. And how about uh, Thomas? Uh, I had just moved in, so that stuff happening, I would be standing there, and I suppose I would turn towards Gilbert and his butler, about ready to go at it. So, All right. So on the other side of the house here, uh, Gilbert pulls out his um, short sword. He draws his weapon, and uh, he he seems like he's like putting it up uh, in sort of a defensive fashion here. The ghost uh, is going to end up moving, closing that gap, and well, we shall see. Da, da, da. Just looking this up quick. We're watching a um, class warfare right here. Yep, that is that is essentially the nature of what's <laughs> happening. The ghost moves ahead and is going to get a seventeen to hit. I don't think I have to look up Gilbert's AC to know that that will work. And so it is. You just see, like, the ghost reaches out and grabs Gilbert. His hair, like, instantly turns salt and pepper gray. And wrinkles start forming uh, across his face. He gets a little hunched. Um, he's still alive, but it, it looks like he... If he doesn't die in this combat, he's probably got a couple years left. Um, and so then he, like, feebly uh, swings out with his sword... And misses. Ah! Oh, oh, I feel so old. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a d6. Next initiative roll. Okay. A one. Uh, I also rolled a I one. I so should have said that I was going to... Uh, you know, before you do that, I will be doing... Uh, a turn? I will be using... Yeah, turn. Gotcha. Cool. I roll a three. Five. Five. Okay, so party goes first. Uh, anybody changing up their movement? Uh, yeah, when I see that ghost just suck out his life, I'm springing into action. I'm going to charge the ghost. All right. So you're in melee with... Uh, anybody else want to be in melee range of the specter? No. All right. <laughs> uh, ranged attacks. <laughs> This is why your characters always die, Winston. <laughs> well, he's he's an elf. If he no, gets it's... if he gets hit, he hit, what what does aging mean to him? You know? <laughs> I'm young and spry. I'm only 117 years yeah. old. <laughs> Several hundred years left. He's just a baby. Just a baby. Range attacks. Range attacks. Let's start with Topsy. Raspo, please. Twelve. A 12 does not hit. Oh, man. They sort of hit somebody, but they're the not there. Spectre kind of, yeah, he kind of blinks out once in a while, you know? Like, like he just goes completely invisible for, like, a half second or whatever. And that seems to happen as your arrow, like, shoots. Um, or your crossbow bolt. Um, how about Lilibeth? 
any ranged attack? I'll try. I'll try. Having seen that. Um, and no. <laughs> All right. Same kind of thing. You both maybe were shooting at the exact same time. Uh, doesn't connect. I think that's everyone for ranged. Then we can go into melee attacks. Let's start with silver. Yep. So I um, take a big swing with Alfheim, which, by the way, has some extra help against the undead. Oh, that's right. So I think this will work, but I rolled a 12. So I missed. That one will miss. Uh, other melee attacks? We have rerolls. That I is. Have... Oh, I'm sorry. Do we use I... the reroll? Yeah. You All right. Should that. I use it? What do you all think? Do it. Do it. Do it. Let's do it. Come on, Alfheim. Alfheim. Fuck. Worse. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> no. I did um, use a reroll. Uh... Sorry. And thank you to everybody out there that has given rerolls. I haven't really been paying too good of attention to that, so appreciate it. I think instead of like attacking, I'm going to push Gilbert out of the way from trying to do another attack since he is an old man. I'm just going to say, you're, you're old. All right. Give me another strength check. Okay. He's going to whoop my ass again. Watch this. Uh, okay. Plus one, a nine. He just like elbows you in the face as you try to like grapple him, and he's like, "Do not lay hands on me." This old man just uh, <laughs> you're being too gentle. You're just trying to like, you're like, "Yeah, come on." Yeah, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so oh I think that brings us to the turn. Yeah. All right, so um, if this creature Was has, oh, I'm sorry, Thomas, have you gone? No, I, I'm assuming that there's no magical, you know, I don't have a magical weapon. I'm assuming that this thing can only be hit by magical attacks. Is it possible for me to just take this round instead of attacking, do my lore check to see if I know anything about sure. this thing? Uh, let's see. what do I do? Okay, a two and six chance. The creepy ass uh, ghost. I rolled a three, so negatory. Okay. All right. Uh, if this creature has uh, two hit die, it is automatically turned. Otherwise, I rolled a two. So probably not. This is an otherwise. I needed a seven. Yeah. Yeah, I needed a seven to get it to, or a nine to get to three. Okay, so I'm praying, uh, and it seems to have no effect. Please be... At peace, please, please, please. <laughs> I'll throw an extra please in to help. The sp specter is going to reach out at Gilbert, who is defiantly, um, you know, going to put the, the help in its place. And the specter is just shrieking about disrespect. And my family has served yours for all these years. And look at the thanks we get. We're all cursed. We're all doomed. And it reaches out. And I probably do have to look up this one. So he's going to be a 14 to hit. I just have to see what Gilbert's armor class is. And that will hit. And you just watch the the remaining life in Gilbert's body kind of be drained. He just looks like a raisin or a prune. Like all of the moisture and life just dissolve. And he's just like a mummified looking figure that just you're surprised he doesn't collapse and turn into dust as he drops to the ground. Oh, and thank you for the more more rerolls, more rerolls for the players. That's awesome. Thank you so much. As soon as Gilbert kind of turns to dust and hits the ground or whatever, I'm just gonna be like, um, you know, uh, 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 "Viva la revolution!" <laughs> I think at that point, uh, the specter, um ignores you well i'm gonna make it a, i'll make it a morale check that's what i'm gonna do all right 
no, the Spectre, I think, turns, and it did take a... There was a swing that Silver took at it, and so it's like... It turns its eyes to you, Silver. Um, so let's roll a uh, d6 for initiative here. Right. Mm -mm. The one again. Okay, uh, so the Spectre is up first, and is going to... Roll, we're, we're retiring that d6 over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, silver does a 16 hit. I think it does. Let me double check. I just closed my sheet. An accident. It, uh, yes, it does hit. Take now, I, go ahead. Eight points of damage. <laughs> Jeez. Please. How does it look? How does it skin look? Is it moisturized? Now, I do have, uh, some protection against energy drain. So I don't know if that's what's happening here or if it's something different. Um, there is an extra effect. Uh, so what is your protection against energy? It comes from Alfheim, right? Uh, yeah, it allows a saving, a save versus death to avoid the loss of levels. Okay, yeah, you wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, save versus death. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Now, it's a four. Am I supposed to roll above or below? It yeah. says it's a fail. Yeah, you want to roll above on the saves. So you want to employ a reroll? Reroll, 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 reroll. Double fours. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Why? You're going to have to get so much video. gold back. Another. He is now copper upon his brow. They're just. <laughs> <laughs> So you will lose a level of experience. Oh, oh my, my god. <laughs> That's bad. That is not great. We need some help. If you're, if you're level one and that happens, do you die? Yeah. Wow. All right. I think that takes my Glad you're not level point. one. How do we want to adjudicate Actually, the points? you know what? I, I, I'm sorry. I forgot that I did not want to do this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do the experience drain thing, but I do want it to suck. So it's still going to suck, but it's going to be constitution damage you take. Oh no! So okay, how in much? some ways maybe it's worse, but um, it is objectively worse. But throw it at me. Two points. Oh, oh, ho, ho. Okay. I'll deal with the consequences of that in the math later. <clears throat> Yeah, you'll probably lose a couple hit hit points. I think I might lose one, or yeah, I guess two. Two, yeah, you're level two. Let me see. I'll look it up. All right, I, I'm at 14 cons. I'm not like totally screwed, but oh yeah, you still have a plus one. That'll bring us to the player's turn. So anybody want to switch up movement? I will move myself into melee. I as well. Now, I have this moon blade. I mean, it's a magical blade. There's no, like, bonuses I get the thing, but it's a blade that is magical. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more or less going to be fighting with that as, like, my damaging weapon. So That sounds good. That's, that's a short sword, right? I believe yes. that's great. Yeah. And I think so this I'm... is probably a good time to remind Lilibeth that you have yes. magical ammunition. Yes, I do. And so I'm going to switch to my magical ammunition and hope I shoot better. Uh, so I will um, communicate about my constitution issue here. I lost, uh, I went from a 16 to a 14, so I lose a point of hit points. However, this is actually good because I was not adding the bonus that you get from constitution. So I actually, I think I actually gained two hit points. I just realized I've been doing that wrong. <laughs> so that's a good <laughs> reminder. <laughs> I'm gonna. It's a net so game, I'll, I'll double right? check. Yeah, it's nice. It's a net. Yeah, it's a net. Yeah. When when your failure as a player results in, <laughs> you know, a game, a net gain. Like you know, I, I you know I just thought old school essentials you didn't get anything off your cons. That's good. It's nice. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's resolve any ranged attacks here that we have. I think maybe a little bit the zeal. Well, Fry, are you doing ranged? Uh, for movement, I would have moved a bit away back uh, to be in range with this uh, creature. Yes, I'm doing range as well. All right, let's uh, let's start with Friar. Ooh, um, does he? I don't think a ten hits. It does not. So okay. Thing blinks out of 
the way Rock passes right through that space and hits the wall, Lilibeth is primed and ready to go with a magical arrow. Does a uh, 13 hit? 13 does not hit. Yet. And these arrows are um, not recoverable. So once once they are shot, I... the magic in it is gone and limited resource. Um, <sighs> we're going to swing over to the melee folks. Let's start with silver. Can I call something before that? Sure. I wasn't trying to do a maneuver and not a actual combat attack. Okay. I will do that at the end. Okay. All right, so that is actually a 17. Because you get an additional is point. What you need. Ooh. All right, it'll be seven points of damage to the uh, ghost, to the specter. I mean, and this is magical, obviously, but I don't know uh, if it has any other resistances. Is there extra damage for it being undead? It is. So I get a plus one for the sword and a plus. Uh, Oh, it should be an additional plus ones. I think it's plus. I don't think I get any damage for it being un. I get any bonus for the uh, be undead, but I believe it's a plus two sword, and I have a plus one for strength. Gotcha. Unless it's a plus one sword. I think it was. I'd have to look back, but I think it yeah. is a plus two. Okay. Let's just. I think we should just keep it as it is because I've been doing it. So I'll just say seven damage. Seven is. What I just it get is. a bonus for. Yeah, it may be that might be wrong. We can look at it later. Um, I think we did it right. So it's seven damage, and it was a plus. It's just a plus one to the plus two to the hit. So that's the big difference. Sounds good. Uh, let's move to Joffrey. All right. I missed twelve. And do uh, you you all recall? You got some rerolls here, just just so you know. You got two rerolls. I will reroll. Oh. Uh, yes, that with my pluses, it's a twenty-one. That's a hit. Beautiful. And what was the damage on this? Was it a D eight plus two? I think it was five. Five points of damage. That'll bring us to Thomas. Uh, thank goodness for advantage. Uh, roll a 9 and a 19, so that'll be 20 for 6 points. Hopefully the sword hits. It does. It it seems to make uh, contact, and it does damage. You can see the strain and frustration and anger uh, in the specter's face as it is just now upset. The Pretty tears, the, the ethereal tears on its face have dried, and now he's just um, overcome with uh, hate. And then okay. Topsy. Um, I was going to distract it for the bonus for the next attack roll, but I think it's on the target's next turn, so he's going next, so it would do nothing. So that's it. Help me understand what you just said. Is this like you a can, maneuver you, that you have? Yeah. No, it's the thing the the optional combat rules we did. Okay. I was going to do that, but that's a... Are you trying to, like, decoy sort of attack? You, you? Can, you can distract a target within five feet of you if your your ally attacks the target before its next turn. The first attack roll is made with a plus four, but it being the target that's being distracted, so... Got it. Okay. So you want to... No, no, I, can just swing this. I, can, I can just use melee attack. It's fine. No, we can roll with what you're, what you're trying to do, but let's just, like, work it out. So you're going to try to distract it to get a bonus to uh, future I was, attack. I, yeah, I was trying Correct. to do a plus four for Silver's next attack roll is what I was trying to do. Like, the first ally attack. Yeah, so let's play, like, let's let's do that. Like, he could get a plus four on his next attack roll if you're... Describe how you are distracting. Well, no wonder you're cursed. You're really shitty at your job, I would say. You deserve all of this. All of this you deserve. This is all your fault. All right. That's what you want. That's what you want. So plus Boss four trader. bonus to your next attack rule, Silver. Nice. All right. Uh, that concludes this turn, so we need another initiative roll. All right, come on, Ryan. This is important. Four. The DM is going to use a re-roll. Mm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do we have any re-rolls left? You do. <laughs> We we, we could, just wants to see a we could have a we could have a roll off war here. Okay, I rolled a six. 
Do I re-roll it, guys? That's a tough one to no. get. Yeah. Do you try to, try to no. equal it? All right. No? Okay. Because if we lose, and then it hits somebody, and Let's, let's save the re-roll for death saving throws. Okay. Save against yes. death. All right. All right, D6. Uh, make an attack roll against against silver. The energy drain. Oh, come on. A 15 to hit? You're going to really like this, Alex, because it does hit only because I got hobbled that one time and I lost a dexterity point. Uh, <laughs> you ain't played armor, right? It's in play armor 16? Yeah, but I have a minus one because of my dexterity. So, Oh. <laughs> yeah. So good news is the damage is only one. And further good, news. further good news is you are the one character that gets to make a save against the drain. So That's right. Save against death. Come on. Let's do it. Um, let's go. Let's go. God dang it. You got to reroll. <laughs> reroll. Use the reroll on this. Use the All right, please. let's do it. 13 All is right. the number. You so, yeah, to... <laughs> hit it. Yay. All right. Keep it's a point. magic number. So, yes, it is. Player's turn. Uh, ranged attacks. I think we got um, Lilibeth. Okay, so. It, and this doesn't disturb what Topsy just did because I'm no. an ally too. No. Okay. Cool. No. No um, going. It's um, no go. Uh, Friar. No. Uh, no. All right. We're going to our our melee here. Let's start with uh. Let's start with Thomas this time. All right. Come on, no, advantage work for me. Ooh, with advantage, I rolled two ones. Oh. <laughs> that's a yeah, special that's kind of a lucky. Life. That's a special kind of thing. Oh, God. Yeah. Sir wow. Jeffrey. All right. I also rolled a one. Wow. All right. What? Well, I had rolled the one too. So, yep. holy uh, mackerel. All right. I feel like Silver. I had the highest like a freaking <laughs> Critical failure. Uh, that's actually a fifteen, but that's a miss, right? That is a miss. Oh, you have a plus four, though. Oh, you have a plus four. Yeah, is yeah, that with so it? So that is a nineteen. Mm. I think it, I think it's baked in. Yeah, it's baked in. Oh god! Uh, no. Come on. Are we out of re rolls? You're out of re rolls. You honest person, you. With eleven points, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> eleven damage too. Uh, Topsy. Man. You're wasting your time trying to hit this one. He's already an elf. He's the enemy, but he's better than you. He is better. He's so much better than you. All right. Distracting. distracting. All right. Uh, D6. I wish they would have a Cats and Baldur's Gate distracted people because this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Two ones. That's crazy. Uh, There's four total. You got yeah. another. Uh, roll another initiative. I rolled a five. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Do it. Five. All right. Reroll. Oh, I got a six. <sighs> the butler turns to the little kitty cat and is just mm -hmm. reaches no. out. I am better. I am better. There's only a 13 to hit. Miss. So I think the DM nice. has to press this button. Oh, and I think all of the rerolls are currently zeroed out now. Oh, you're not the good same enough. roll. <laughs> oh, Players yeah, turn. Yay. Uh, I, miracle. Everyone's good with movement. We could go to our ranged Lilibeth. No. No. Briar. Please, please. Uh, I got a 17 to hit with four points of damage. And the sling stone just passes right through its form. Yeah. <laughs> bless the darn thing next time. Yes, bless uh, Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm coming in. I'm All right. Go. Silver. Please. Oh my god, it's a 10. <laughs> Silver, I'm, I'm trying. Look at all that here. damage, it's just not happening. I know. Wow. I'm just swinging out to help him around like a maniac. <laughs> I think we all are right now. Sir Joffrey. All right. Oh. Yes, okay. 19. That hits? Yes. Okay. Five damage. It is still up. Thomas. 
Bring us home. I rolled a two and a 20. Natural 20? Yay! Natural 20. So maximum yeah. damage. Maximum damage is seven points. How do you finish it? Yeah, baby. Uh, I move in, uh, do what I can with my, with my uh, you know, primary, the silvered longsword or whatever that doesn't do anything. But I take that moon blade and put it right into this uh, creature's chest. It just dissolves away as you, it, it, the rage subsides and it just looks at you. It kind of puts its hands up almost in prayer as it dissolves away. Um, and I think with that, you're looking, you're leering over at the other objects in the corner, probably wanting to keep your distance as Topsy kind of mentioned, uh, second guessing with some of those interactions with the top hat and the shoes. Um, you're looking about and you realize that you've just stepped into this huge playground. There's something wrong with this place. It maybe is cursed. Um, there's a whole history that needs to be worked out and uh, puzzled through. And given how dangerous this first step into the castle is, you're thinking it might not be a bad idea to get get some help, get some reinforcements. And I think the way we're going to close this out is that the mists and the fog down on uh, Lake Longmere kind of clear a little bit. And you notice, and you're able to see as you're making your way out of the castle, that there is a settlement. Maybe we weren't expecting that, but livable, modern structure. Um, it looks like maybe it's, you know, there's a wooden palisade around it and some watchtowers. And you can see uh, some flags that are risen. And it's clearly a... Um, a, a fort under the banner of, uh, of Brackenwold. So it might be a good place to go and get some supplies, refuel, and maybe find some companions to come uh, take the journey with you to come up here and uh, explore this place for treasures and such. So that is where we're going to leave it. That is where, um, that is our entry point for our audience, if they so choose to create level one hirelings to enjoy these sessions. This will be a mega dungeon crawl that we are uh, embarking on. You can come and join the, the Dolmenwood characters are kind of, you know, they're the main characters, but uh, we're going to bring in some side characters to uh, tell their stories. And who knows, maybe later on down the road when uh, Dolmenwood is officially released and we've got those materials, we'll, we'll do more Dolmenwood adventures that could be seeded with uh, some of the characters that join us for for castle Centillon. so if this was your first time stopping in please do join our discord server so you can come hang out and sign up for these games uh, if you really like what we are doing please uh, support our patreon that is where you could uh, our patrons get the first crack at signing up for these sessions that we will be doing um, and they also, uh, it's a great place to, if you want to catch up on everything that's been happening with Dolmenwood, you want to learn the history of these characters, there's, I think, 29 episodes or something like that of the podcast that you could check out there. Hey, Page of Moss, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Normally, at the end of these sessions, we would do gratitude and such with one another, but a bunch of us are about to sign up for GaryCon events, so we're going <laughs> to we're gonna step off like right away so that we can go and do that. If you're going to be at GaryCon, come find us and uh, let us uh, play a game together or something. So It's with... been an honor playing in this Dolman movie with everybody. Yeah, yeah. it's been yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for rocking and rolling with us. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next time. Uh, if you jump in the Discord, we'll have our schedule of events for next week uh, up in Adam. Uh, the next session of this will be next Saturday at 8 p.m. So if that works out in your schedule, please do stop by the Discord and sign up for that. So, all right. Really nice. Have a good night or good morning, where whatever it is where you're at, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everybody.